Well, man, we're still hard at it in New Zealand this week. Cat was up to bat first. I kind of butted in front of her, got my big stag. He's a bloody good one. You got seven on this side and 11 on that, if you count that little redneck point on the outside. You got a management fallow. Yes. A little camp meat, a little cold butt. Now, she's met with some adversity so far. We've been in range, we've had opportunities. She just hadn't got it done yet. That's all right. Every time like I got this I around, that he was stop for you. I thought she was gonna kill this day. She's trying to do it all with the Barnett crossbow, and so far we've been getting our butts kicked. That's okay, we're not gonna get discouraged. Also on her hit list is an Arapawa Ram, so she's got a lot to get done in just a couple of days. We're gonna keep going, we're gonna keep hunting hard and see what we can do. Also on my hit list, I still have a big trophy fallow deer to kill. I'm not a real big fan of pulling them out of the ground when they look like that. Don't be like me, kids. Don't beat yourself up and have a temper. It's getting better with age. There was a time I'd wrap that bow around that tree up there. You know, we killed my stag with plenty of daylight left, so with cool temperatures like we had, we just drug it out into the four-wheeler trail and decided to hunt the rest of the day until dark with Cat. We've got the next two sorted out. Oh, yeah. yeah, three. <laughs> Did you say you got the next two sorted out? <laughs> yeah. Well, Vance and Shane had spotted two really good stags chasing hinds down on a meadow that wasn't too far from the mountain we were on. So with, you know, daylight fading at this point, we decided not to waste much time dropped off into this canyon and went after these stags. The problem we're having is we're running into other stuff on the way to the deer we're actually trying to kill. The cat's got the barn and crossbow. We're hoping to get close enough for her to get a shot, but they're freaking out. While we're sneaking up on the two big stags we want to kill, we get pinned down by a smaller stag chasing some hinds in the meadow. <laughs> Well, this stag wasn't the granddaddy of the woods. We decided if he got in range of Cat and her Barnett crossbow, she was gonna go ahead and let the air out of him. Well, while we were trying to get within 50 yards or less, this sucker spooked, but we got a consolation prize just chilling right there broadside. I don't think anybody used a range finder. We just kind of guessed how far this thing was. I, I think I heard somebody say 40 yards, and uh, before we knew it, thinking this thing was a little more like 30 yards. We're quietly moved, there's another stag around the corner. Man, I was trying to hold it in. I felt like the announcer from that movie, uh, Major League. In this case, it would have been just a bit high, but I had to bite my tongue because you gentlemen out there know if you've got a wife that you don't, you don't poke fun at somebody when they're angry. On the corner. No, but what I mean is why did I not? Well, it's good practice better a hide than a stag. No, I know. Good practice in our communication and everything. Let's move while we've got some daylight. There's no sense for us to sit there with cat's panties in a wad. I mean, we had to make a move on these two big stags. We got two stags on the next clear about 300 yards away. One's bigger than we're looking for. The other one I can't see. We'll have to take a look. Well, it wasn't hard to find these suckers once we got down in the brush with them. You know, they were roaring, chasing each other around. They were ripping it up.
The problem was we could not get within that magic 50 yard range for Cat to feel comfortable to take a shot. And that last one was what, near 65, I think? 65, yeah. He was a good shot, standing broadside on, good yeah. to go, just, just a bit far. Yeah, so that's better be safe and sorry. What do you, what do you think? You look ticked off. No, I'm not ticked. I just wish I had a stag on the ground right now. <laughs> that's the way it goes. Yeah, yeah. we have our share of frustrations, but you know, that's uh, that spot with stork hunting. Oh, yeah. That's a challenge with a lot of other animals here. Oh, well, tomorrow's another day, huh? We'll get one tomorrow. That's what I feel like. Well, the next morning, instead of spotting stags from the helicopter pad like we normally did, we decided since they were being so vocal, we were just gonna try to locate a stag based on their roaring. And it didn't take us long and we got right up underneath one he was ripping it up just above us on a steep bank. So Vance, AKA Flextone, <laughs> drops back and he starts calling. Well, this stag is coming down the mountain, man, and it wasn't long before Cat was face to face with a monster stag. Well, yet another frustration on this hunt. Cat had brush in the way, she couldn't get a shot, and this thing was close enough to smell his breath. You would have had to crouch. You would have had to go right down like that. Should I have done that with him staring right at me? Yeah, but there was, you couldn't have shot through that. No, not that or those trees up top. All right. See those two split right there? So he wasn't far enough out there? No. His neck was in that. Let's give it a roll. I don't know where it goes. So we decide, you know, it's it, the sun's coming up pretty good, and my stag's still up on the mountain, and we take the Polaris and we go ahead and get him. Once we get him loaded up, we start heading out, and we spot a giant stag down in the meadow. Now there's no real opportunity for this thing to be stalked within bow range because it's wide open. I mean, it's just a little scrub brush cover. You know, as bad as Cat wanted to get it done with the Barnett, she couldn't pass up on this opportunity. A rifle shot was the only option. So Shane offered up his 300 Ultra Mag, fully suppressed. And we were all sitting up on that hilltop like a sniper team on a rooftop. Finally, this sucker turned broadside, and she took that 300 Ultra Mag and said, hang on to that for me real quick. Y'all ready? Yeah. Load up. Bolt action. Hit him again. You yeah. don't see it because of the high speed. She put one through both shoulders. This thing whirled around. She put another shot through both shoulders from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot, baby. Yes! He's good. How good was that? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was a good shot. Shots. <sighs> you got way too <sighs> close to way too many awesome stags to let that one live. There's no way any self-respecting killer could pass that opportunity. Oh. That's awesome. Oh, I'm so excited. Go look at him. Okay. We're gonna have to maybe get another Polaris. <laughs> now it's kind of full. Well, at least it's a decent <laughs> walk down there. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You done, it happened. I told you it would happen. 
the week we had and so many close encounters. Yeah, we just had some bad luck here and there. Oh my God. But I'm glad that we did, because look at this dude. Look at that. I know it. Like, Clear and characteristic is how, how heavy that antler is. Yeah. It's just super heavy. Look at the velvet, a little bit of velvet left in certain yeah, spots. Yeah, he's got a little bit of velvet up there, but he's nicely stained up, nice hard yeah. points on him. He's old pretty. stag, he must be an old stag to have a big heavy beam like that. Yeah. He's pretty. Okay. I can't believe it. Something about that Campbell's Basin, huh? Well, I, I must know be. It. Four stags you've killed. Mm -hmm. All in Campbell's Basin. <laughs> I'll throw this one on your back and carry it out or what? Yeah, let's do it. Throw me out. <laughs> well, the weight's been lifted off of us, man. The whole point of this first leg of the trip was to get Cat a good stag. And the cool thing about it was we can drive and get both these stags and haul them back to camp, but Cat said, you know, in true Kiwi fashion, I want to at least pack the head and the antlers and the cape it's a traditional way just to just to feel good about ourselves that we didn't just totally the polarises are nice and very accommodating but uh, you know we wanted to pack it at least a little bit of the way back to camp Cat still had one more animal that she wanted to kill on this trip, and that was an Arapawa ram. Well, on our first adventure to New Zealand, we found out that these Arapawa rams were no joke. I mean, they're hard to hunt. I tell you what, man, if you don't have respect for bow hunting the Arapawa ram, you have never bow hunted an Arapawa ram. Especially because this time of year, they're not rutting. So you've got a group of rams and ewes, and you've got a ton of eyes on you. <laughs> I mean, they're open country dwellers, and you think, well, these are easy, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they just got all those eyes going, and they got all that nervousness, and they group up. This particular trophy, I could tell, after shooting one with a rifle, which she's done in the past, she was wanting to stick to that Barnett crossbow, man. She was wanting to turn a crossbow bolt red, I can tell you that. Now with Cat's plane leaving at lunchtime, we decided that Josh was gonna stay back at camp and wait for the Florida guys to come in. Meanwhile, Shane, Cat, and myself were gonna go out and try to bloody up one of these Barnett crossbow bolts on a good Arapaho ram. You know, as luck would have it, we found a great group of rams. Any of them would have been fine to shoot. We slipped up on them set up on this little knob and we waited for the rams to feed down to us down this little cut road. like a good shot and we weren't too sure you know because of the situation where this thing was hit. Did you see where I hit? No. I was over. Wouldn't you know it after Cat shot this ram a even bigger ram comes in to investigate what happened. <laughs> when he smells this arrow he just takes off running. That's good blood. Oh, smell blood. blood. I felt really steady. You know, we eased down the hill to investigate, and this thing wasn't laying 30 yards from the spot she shot it at. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> I did it. Good kill. <laughs> well done. Oh, God. Oh, well done. Baby. Get last, like, <laughs> last ditch effort for a bow kill with the barnet. She put it all up on him from about 40 yards. I was proud of the girl, man. And, and, I was pretty, pretty excited about the footage that I got because I was, to tell you the truth, a little bit nervous because I hadn't held a camera in several years. I just give him a poke, give him a poke in the eye. Mm -hmm. Just tap his eyes. He blinks his eyes. He's I did not think coming down that face that they would be here when we got down here. I was like, dish. Last time we came four years ago, I shot one with a rifle and my stag with a rifle. And then this time, I got my, my ram with the barnet. Oh, Neil's gonna be so excited too. 
Well, Cat had come to New Zealand with two goals in mind, and with just a couple hours left before she had to fly back to Virginia, she got number two gold checked off her list, and we were coming back to camp with a good Arapaho ram. What's up, What's up? How you doing? Good. So the Florida boys get here at lunchtime. Bo Dotley cleared customs and he got his rabies shots and stuff like that. Kill, how you doing? How you doing, brother? Good, brother. How you doing? Good. You too. Heck yeah, man. So you let these hillbillies come. Uh, hillbillies are right here, baby. <laughs> also walking back on the road. Yeah. Huge. Well, I think it was a silver still, but really heavy still. Yeah. He was grazing up ahead of us. Wind was perfect, Pearl. rushing yeah. hard at our faces. Yeah. I walked up with 10 yards from him. You could have done it. Oh, I could have shot him 50 times. He didn't know she was in the world. Yeah. I'm filming the whole thing. If y'all have ever seen the movie Happy Gilmore, the way he is in golf, that's the way I'm with bow hunting. I hate that deer. The fallow deer continues to be my nemesis in New Zealand. Or well, the trophy fallow, I've shot plenty of other fallow. Earlier in the week, I had an encounter with a fallow buck on one of Cat's hunts that I really should be displaying on my wall now. Oh, this fallow buck group of those at about 70 yards. I ranged this thing, man, and my rangefinder, the little doohickey that tells you the elevation or whatever change, said shoot at him like he's at 60 yards. Then I ranged him with the real rangefinder and said 75. Well, my fall from grace was a sight to see. Shot about that low. Right under. It said to hold 60. And it was 75. I felt good about shots. Just went right under. I don't know what happened, man. I'm the, I'm the kind of guy, I'm super competitive. It ticks me off. That's a very mild way of putting how angry I get. I'm not a real big fan of pulling them out of the ground when they look like that. Don't be like me, kids. Don't beat yourself up and have a temper. It's getting better with age. There was a time I'd have wrapped that bow around that tree up there. You know, another hunt has come to a close. Cat is flying back to the sovereign state of Virginia. We could not have had a better time over here in New Zealand. She had opportunities at a lot of stags. Things didn't work out, but that just added to the satisfaction when she finally put that 300 Ultra Mag bullet through the old rib cage of that great big old stag. And I can tell you, she's going home with a smile on her face. She also accomplished her bow kill, man. She got her first overseas bow kill. She smacked that Arapaho Ram at over 40 yards. I was proud of the girl, man, and you know, we are looking forward to the next week. These boys from Florida don't play, man. Yeah. <laughs> We're about to have a good time. I'm still after my trophy fallow deer. Oh yeah. What do you think? Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Y'all catch up with us right here on Ram's Red Arrow next week on the Outdoor Channel, son. Alright, here we go. That last take sucks. <laughs> That's as close as I've ever come to having a heart attack. Sat on my keys. That scared the heck out of me. Not funny, that was not planned. You can see the terror in my face. Well, at this point in the trip, cat, the, the point of this whole trip was to get scat a skitty scat skit. We had a bunch of time to get his cat, skip, skit, skit, scat, skip, skit, 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 skit. I got to give me some air conditioning here. Can we get an air conditioning sponsor? 